I'm Jimmy Carr, these are my jokes, let's not fuck about. <laughs> before we get started, who's seen me before? <laughs> who's never seen me before? <laughs> you sound happier. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure this is working. According to Ofcom, the people that made the guidelines for television, according to Ofcom, the most offensive words on TV are the F word and the C word. But I'm live on stage this evening, so I can say whatever the fuck I like. <laughs> And those cunts can't do anything about it. <laughs> I had trouble getting out tonight. Had to organize a babysitter. Uh, I don't have children. <laughs> Just found they're a lot cheaper than escorts. <laughs> She's 17. There's nothing she won't do for 50 pounds. <laughs> it's all half a joke, that, isn't it? Because it's quite funny, but also true. <laughs> when I'm away from home, I sometimes get lovesick. Wow. They call it chlamydia. <laughs> I spend a lot of my time away from home, because this is my job. I travel around the country telling jokes to people. I love it. But I spend a lot of my time away staying in hotels, because I have to travel. I was in a hotel a couple of weeks ago, walked into the hotel room. As I walked in there, just on the TV, it said, the adult channel is disabled. <laughs> I thought, that's a bit specialist. <laughs> I'm joking. I was gutted, no spaz porn. <laughs> I'm sure you've all seen this, Birmingham. On trains, they've got seats reserved for elderly, disabled and pregnant people. Begs the question, who's fucking all these old cripples? <laughs> Do you ever hear anything so dumb, it's almost brilliant? So stupid, it just it takes you a moment to work out what just happened. I'll give you an example. I was on a bus, I heard this girl get on the bus, walk up to the driver and go, can I get a return? And the driver went, where to? And she went, back here. <laughs> it took me like an extra beat to, oh, what's going on? Oh, she's a fucking idiot. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> People worry about their physical appearance. We've all got silly hang-ups. Personally, I worry that one of my balls is bigger than the other two. <laughs> I shave my testicles. I call them Brazil nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me giggle. Because it tickles when I do it. <laughs> the first few weeks of joining Weight Watchers, you're just finding your feet. <laughs> well done. Altogether or not at all on the laughter, I think. <laughs> Feed line, punch line, laugh. Don't fuck about. <laughs> You're getting it late nonsense. Um, are there any ginger people in tonight? We got any ginger people? Yes. You seem to have contained the problem there. Good. <laughs> ginger people get given a hard time. People say very unkind things about gingers, but I think you should be destroyed humanely. <laughs> I can talk. Check out the look I'm rocking. I look like a Lego Hitler. <laughs> That's his style. Hmm? When I broke up with my last girlfriend, I said, I said, I blame myself. I should never have let you let yourself go. <laughs> but you have, so you have to fuck off. <laughs> Do you read the Sunday papers, Birmingham? Do you all read the Sunday papers? I like the papers on a Sunday morning. I think it's a nice time to reflect on the last week and also to look ahead for the next week. We read the Sunday papers like the News of the World in, in bed, Sunday morning, a couple of weeks ago, tea, toast, Sunday papers. What could be nicer? What could be more British? Anyway, my girlfriend turns to me. There's some sex scandal in the News of the World, as there invariably is. And my girlfriend turned to me and went, I hope I never find out you're having an affair. I said, me too. <laughs> you could be the moral arbiter on this one, Birmingham. Right? You'd be the moral arbiter on this one this evening. I've got a friend, he got dumped by his girlfriend. She ended their relationship just because he said something. They were, they were making love, they were mid-coitus. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> as he orgasmed, as he, as he, as he arrived, <laughs> ejaculated, came. The most intimate, but also the most vulnerable time for a man, as, as that occurred, as he... <laughs> he said, bang, and the dirt is gone. <laughs> I 
I can see two distinct groups of men. There's some men looking at me as if to say, I don't think that's that bad. <laughs> I think maybe she's overreacted a little bit. And then I can see other men looking at me as if to say, note to self. <laughs> You've got to be very careful with jokes in the bedroom because it's quite funny to say to a girl who's sucking you off, it's rude to talk with your mouth full. <laughs> but it's even funnier if she says, well, it's not full. <laughs> Having sex with someone at work is all right, as long as you don't work in a primary school. <laughs> I've got a friend who's a part-time teacher. Well, they're all part-time. <laughs> Are there teachers in? Come on, it's your own time you're wasting. <laughs> Where are the teachers? Give us a shout, the teachers. <laughs> and what was it that first attracted you to um, children? <laughs> Not all teachers, obviously, that would be mental, but PE teachers, they're wrong -uns. <laughs> You know what PE is short for? Pedo. <laughs> Fact. You can look that up. You know why so many American kids die in high school massacres? It's because they're not allowed to run in the corridors. <laughs> Take your time with that, that's wrong on a number of levels. <laughs> it's very I don't know if you've noticed this, Birmingham. It's very difficult to get the first kiss right. You want to be firm but gentle. You want to be manly, but you don't want to wake her up. <laughs> first dates are very delicate. Is anyone on a first date this evening? <laughs> Is anyone on a first date, no? Yeah, yeah. On your own? <laughs> Seems a little bit suspect, doesn't it? <laughs> We're going somewhere very special. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I realise women don't masturbate. You just expect us to believe you really enjoy baths. <laughs> well, my first, my, well, good luck if you're on a first date. See, first dates are very delicate, because if you call her the next day, she'll think you're too keen, she'll be put off. I, I, if you never phone, she'll think the worst of you. So what I do as a compromise is I phone her the next day and call her a slag. <laughs> Sometimes you can sense a friend wants to take things further. Will it ruin the friendship? Things get hot and heavy on the sofa one night, you think? This doesn't feel right. You're my best friend. You're not even allowed on the couch. <laughs> Bad dog, down boy. <laughs> Did I say down boy? <laughs> I've made it gay. <laughs> I fucked a girl with one leg. <laughs> Should have used my cock. <laughs> now I realise this joke does not require a mime. <laughs> it's a Saturday night in Birmingham, come on. <laughs> I said to my girlfriend, I said, um, I said, you want to experiment with a role play rape fantasy? She said, no. I said, that's the spirit. <laughs> rape is such a horrible word, though. It's such a harsh, brutal, awful word. Rape. That's why I prefer to call it a struggle snuggle. <laughs> you couldn't stay mad at a struggle snuggle, could you? <laughs> Bloody adorable. Um, now, I've been a comedian now for about 10 years. I've been doing this job for about 10 years, and I thought this year, I thought this year, I would try and get a bit better. Not a crazy idea, right? One of the things I was quite weak on was regional accents. Is anyone here good at regional accents? <laughs> no. You could barely say the word yes there, so... <laughs> You're not even good at talking, never mind accents. <laughs> but but I, I, I was no good at doing regional accents, and it's one of those things that, as a comedian, it's quite good if you could be good at regional accents, because it's good for telling jokes, but... I thought, well, I'll go away, I'll do some research. This evening I would like to give you a masterclass in regional accents because I've discovered the secret, and the secret is this. All you need is a key phrase to get you started in the regional dialect, and then you're golden. Once you get started, once you get it in your head, you're fine. But getting started can be tricky. So I'll kick off with, um, well, I'll tell you what, I'll kick off with Scouse. Any Scousers in? We've got a Scouser over there, where's the Scouser? Give us a shout. 
<laughs> Don't worry, we're not going to take your benefits away. <laughs> This is the phrase I use to do the Scouse accent. This is the phrase I have in my head to, to get me started in the Scouse. I want some chicken and a can of coke. I want some chicken and a can of coke. I want some chicken and a can of coke. A can of coke. I want some chicken and a can of coke. The little head bobble just comes if you say it a few times. I want some chicken and a can of coke. Well, let's make the Scousers feel at home. Let's everyone. On three, I want some chicken and a can of coke. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> Fantastic, Birmingham. <laughs> Bloody well done. I know. Now, obviously, obviously, that's just to get you started. Once you get started, then you can say something properly, authentically, scouts. I want some chicken and a can of coke. I'm going on the rob. <laughs> I've got to get a prezi. <laughs> it's me gran's birthday. She's 30. <laughs> Anyone in from Belfast? Anyone from Belfast? You're Bel Belfast? Where's Belfast? Hey, Belfast. This is the phrase I use to get the Belfast accent right. Ginger and community. <laughs> Terrifying stare is optional, <laughs> but I find it helps. Ginger and community. <laughs> community has more syllables than you thought it had. <laughs> okay, let's try everyone. Let's go Belfast. Ginger and community. One, two, three. <laughs> Perfect. You are now all qualified to say there's a bomb in the car. <laughs> Roller coaster, pooper scooper, umpa lumpa, Kawasaki, four unrelated words, meaningless in all respects, other than if you're trying to do the Geordie accent. <laughs> in which case, they're a fucking gift. <laughs> Roller coaster, <laughs> pooper scooper, <laughs> umpa lumpa, Kawasaki. <laughs> this makes me happy. Um, All together. Roller coaster. Poopa scoopa. Oompa loompa. Kawasaki. Perfect. <laughs> Are there any Geordies in? <laughs> no, presumably they're outside with their shirts off fighting. <laughs> but I wonder what the fellas are up to. <laughs> Welsh. Should we got any Welsh people in? Yeah. My God, we've got an army. Hello, the Welsh. <laughs> now, I've discovered the secret to the Welsh accent isn't so much a phrase, it's more a state of mind. To do a good Welsh accent, you've just got to sound confused. <laughs> <laughs> Whose coat is that jacket? Shoes are those trainers. <laughs> Let's all try. Whose coat is that jacket? <laughs> Whose shoes are those trainers? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> See those two houses? The one in the middle is mine. <laughs> that paper you're sitting on, are you reading that? <laughs> I came out of the shop and there was my bike. Gone. <laughs> Anyone from Manchester? No one from Manchester. Manchester's pretty, the accent's pretty easy for Manchester. You just need three words. Sighed. All right. Not bad. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> one of my best friends is from Manchester. He's called Ali. He was named after where he was conceived. <laughs> Any Scottish people? We've got Scottish? <laughs> Hello. You're living the stereotype, aren't you, love? 
Obviously, the Scottish accent, probably the best phrase to use is, there's been a murder. <laughs> Chances are there probably fucking has been. <laughs> of course, living in Scotland, the main benefits are unemployment and housing. <laughs> See, the Scouser's ears are perked up. <laughs> like a chavvy meerkat. What? <laughs> There is a bit of a drink problem in Scotland, I hope you don't mind me saying. Yeah, up there they think I'm a double act. <laughs> and the drugs, you wouldn't believe the fucking drugs. Whereabouts in Scotland are you from? Fort William. Fort William, I don't know where the fuck that is. <laughs> what, what, sorry? <laughs> You've got sort of where an accent meets your speech impediment, I think. <laughs> the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> are you introducing yourself? <laughs> sorry. Um, didn't mean it. Sorry. But the drugs in the drugs in Scotland. My up in, in Scotland they call it methadone. It's called I can't believe it's not heroin. <laughs> I think the easiest accent in the UK is the West Country because the West Country is just a pirate voice, isn't it? Who can't do a fucking pirate voice? Ah. <laughs> I'm going on a date with my sister. Oh, my mammy doesn't find out. I'm cheating on her. Are there people in from the West Country? Hey there. All right. Hi, right, hello. Not being patronising, I just thought it would be a little treat for you to see a hand with five fingers. <laughs> Now, what would be the phrase? If I was going to try and do the Birmingham accent, what would be the phrase for Birmingham? What would be the thing if I was going to... All right. All right. All right. The other phrase that seems to come up a lot in Birmingham is, It's fucking shit here. <laughs> All right. It's fucking shit here. <laughs> Any other phrases for Birmingham? What other... What was that? <laughs> That was just all vowels. <laughs> what was it? A yow. A yow, all right. <laughs> a yow, all right. Have you had a stroke? <laughs> I said I shouldn't really joke about strokes. If I ever have a stroke, I'll be laughing out the other side of my face. <laughs> Are there any other words, any other key phrases for Birmingham? What, sorry? Cup of tea. Cup of tea. <laughs> How am ya? How am ya? How am ya? Poorly educated? Have we got any other exotic accents in the rooms? Anyone from overseas or any more exciting? Anyone, any, anyone from the UK that we've missed? Any, any other places in the UK? Jersey! Jersey? <laughs> you haven't got an accent, you tax dodging scum. <laughs> there was that much anti-Jersey feeling. <laughs> it was simmering under. Finally, someone said it. <laughs> You're basically French now, fuck off. <laughs> Has anyone else got a different accent that we haven't covered? Essex! Essex? You mugging me off, you fucking slag. <laughs> you fucking toilet. up. Come on, come on. Fucking slag. I don't know how they make Essex men. Presumably, a man fucks a chicken. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. There's a lot of that going on. Uh, any others? You're Aussie. What, sorry? You're Aussie. Aussie? I can do Aussie. I can do. Is it? Yorkshire? It's 25 pounds a ticket. I thought we priced you out. <laughs> Yorkshire? Yorkshire, I say what I like and I like what I bloody well say. <laughs> Whip it, Tetley, frugal. 
Cricket. <laughs> My favourite Yorkshire phrase is tin, tin, tin. Which means it isn't in the tin. <laughs> tin, tin, tin. <laughs> oh, tin, tin, tin. <laughs> Who do we have? Uh, who's uh, Australian? Give us, a, give us a shout, Australian man. Are you still fucking there? Where are you? <laughs> I could do Australian. I could do. Is it the Prime Minister or the President? I can re never remember, but I could do Alf from Home and Away. <laughs> Whichever one he is. You're acting like a bloody hoon, mate. A larrigan, a prize galah. <laughs> Whatever the fuck a galah is. <laughs> well, you, whereabouts in Australia are you from? Melbourne. Melbourne. So you weren't affected by the flooding, were you? <laughs> is that why you've sat so high up? Not taking any fucking chances, but <laughs> I'm amazed because people, you know, people lost everything in the flooding because they'd forgotten to tie their kangaroos down. <laughs> Serious? People drowned, and you wouldn't have expected that because they're all wearing hats with corks on. <laughs> any others? What, what was that one? Chinese. Ch you're Chinese. <laughs> You don't really sound Chinese, sir. I'll be honest with you. And I think if I did a Chinese accent now, it would, it would, you know, it would smack of razy lacism. <laughs> well, that took you a long time, didn't it? <laughs> I, I, oh, no, got it. Any others? Jamaican? <laughs> Jamaican? You know my name is... You aware of this? Oh, well, this will be a treat for you. I would like everyone in the room now to say my name in a Jamaican accent. One, two, three. Yeah. I am Jamaica. He just went, yay. Bomber clock. <laughs> Clearly got some bomber clots in. They've gone oh, <laughs> on a bloody minute. Any others? <laughs> Dublin. Where, where's the Dublin? Hello, are you from Dublin? I saw the documentary about your weddings. I thought it was terrific. <laughs> oh, oh! That's my favourite. You know I'm a plastic paddy. What they call a plastic paddy. I've got Irish parents, Irish passport, born in Ireland, but I speak and present myself in this way because I was raised and educated in the home counties, which goes to show what you can do when you apply yourselves. <laughs> What's my favorite, my favorite, do you want to hear my favourite Irish joke? Maybe, I, maybe only Irish people get this joke. I'll tell you and see. What's the difference between a riot and a gypsy wedding? You can't buy a gate at a riot. <laughs> Maybe that's just an Irish thing. Ah. Well, look, we'll move on. Every year in my show, I write some jokes that require a visual element to be fully enjoyed, and this year is no exception. So what I thought I'd do now is show you some of the pictures I've done to illustrate the next jokes. Do you want to see them? Yeah. Excellent news, because that is what happens next. <laughs> I've had some ideas. I'll kick off with some ideas. I've had an idea for a rape alarm that when you press it, it plays the Benny Hill theme music. <laughs> you know, to make it more of a caper. Some advice for you. The best way to test the temperature of a bath is with a baby's elbow. <laughs> I've had an idea of how to prop up our currency, the pound, against the euro and the dollar. What we do is we print new pounds, and this time the queen is smiling. <laughs> and if things get really bad, tits out, Your Majesty. <laughs> Little joke for you. What do you get if you cross the queen and Prince Philip? Killed in a tunnel. <laughs> Too soon? It's been 14 years, get over it. <laughs> Alright, point taken, I'll drop that from the Royal Variety. <laughs> I say that, Prince Philip would probably piss himself. <laughs> Although he's 82, he'd probably piss himself anyway. <laughs> Some thoughts for you. When you think about it, a rhino is just a unicorn that didn't moisturise. 
Gillette. Gillette claims to be the best a man can get. What about a blowjob from twins? <laughs> Whatever happened to Jedward? <laughs> The speed men shave in adverts. If I shaved at that kind of speed, my balls would be in shreds. <laughs> when I was told I was bipolar, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. <laughs> friend of mine's got OCD. For those of you that don't know, OCD is an abbreviation. It's just a shorter, quicker way of saying, I'd be a really annoying girlfriend. <laughs> True story. If all the veins in your body were laid out in a straight line, you would die. <laughs> Let's talk about some social issues. My neighbour is noisy and nosy. He's always banging on the walls, shouting, Is anyone there? I've fallen. Is anyone there? <laughs> it's none of your business if anyone's here. <laughs> but still, he's gone quiet now. Childhood is now effectively over by 11, which is when the pubs close and Uncle Terry gets home. <laughs> oh, Uncle Terry. <laughs> I was traumatised as a child. Our priest was cheating on me. <laughs> I just want to reach out to people that attempt suicide and say, Come on, have another go. <laughs> keys to the city, that's a weird thing, isn't it, the keys to the city? Of course, they don't have that in Liverpool, do they? You just get given a coat hanger. <laughs> As a fashion statement, socks with sandals says, I'm either a German, a paedophile, or a cunt. <laughs> Quite possibly, all three. <laughs> Apologies to any paedophiles or cunts we have in. <laughs> it's not going to be any Germans at a comedy gig. <laughs> health. Let's talk about health. That's important, isn't it? I heard that because of women putting on so much weight during pregnancy, it's a good idea to take off your wedding ring. So I did. Posh Spice, Victoria Beckham. She's so thin, she's got to be careful when she has a bath. Because if the water's too hot, she could turn it into stock. <laughs> Obese children put a lot of strain on the NHS. Not to mention seesaws and swings. <laughs> you know, if things carry on as they are, it's predicted that in 40 years' time, the average toddler will be 43. <laughs> Tell you what, let's talk about religion. That couldn't possibly upset anyone. <laughs> if Jesus is the way, and to be a Christian is to be in Christ, then aren't all Christians just in the way? <laughs> Jesus says he loves me, but I worry about the age gap. <laughs> now you'll notice out of deference and respect, to our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, I've let him bum me. <laughs> I've got a Muslim friend who's really religious. <laughs> Feel the tension in the room. <laughs> I've got a Muslim friend who's really religious. He knows the Quran backwards, which is handy because that's how you read it. <laughs> surprisingly well-informed and inoffensive joke about the Islamic faith. And that's because I'm not a fucking idiot. <laughs> what are the Christians going to do? Forgive me. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> Speaking of Christians, any Catholics in? Yeah. Got a few Catholics? Catholics are a weird bunch. <laughs> Look at the rosary. Basically, anal beads. <laughs> Now, I think the next thing for me career-wise, ladies and gentlemen, will be doing some sort of interview show where I talk to people, you know, this kind of setup, a couple of, 
couple of chairs, you face off against each other, Parkinson, Jonathan Ross, Graham Norton, those kind of shows. That'd be great to get, but you can't just start doing that on TV like day one. That'd be tricky. So what I thought what we'd do on this tour is practice. Get someone out of the audience every night with an interesting job or a claim to fame and interview them and get a bit of practice with the interviewing. So to that end, does anyone have an interesting job or a claim to fame? Oh, God, your hand's gone straight up. What do you do? You were on TV in Poland. <laughs> I will take that to mean you work in the adult film business. <laughs> so you've been on Polish TV. Okay, well, that is a claim to fame. Well done, you. And, and Polish radio. Well, finally. <laughs> That's fucking sealed the deal. <laughs> okay, any, any other claims to fame? Interesting jobs? Any others? I mean, it could be from anywhere. It's... You're a priest. Who's a priest? <laughs> You're a priest. I'm looking at you. I'm thinking you might have had some dealings with priests. <laughs> just stand up, just for a second. Just turn around, just so people can see you. See, I mean, am I? Am I being cynical? Or is he definitely not a fucking priest? Any other interesting jobs? What, sorry? I own my own pizza shop. You own your own pizza shop? Yeah. You sound fucking chuffle yourself. <laughs> I own my own pizza shop. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a massive problem with obesity in this country. You should be fucking ashamed. <laughs> pizza, well done. Well done. And, and, and you, the best pizza, you say? Voted best pizza in Britain. Voted best pizza in Britain by... You? <laughs> well, what? Best independent pizza. Best independent pizza. What, what, what? I didn't care the first time. <laughs> you can. I mean. <laughs> Any other unusual jobs or claims to fame? I'm a director. You're a what? Funeral director. A funeral director? <laughs> Love. Your voice couldn't go any better with your job. <laughs> He's fucking dead. <laughs> How am you? Dead. <laughs> fucking shit here. Okay, so funeral director, that's pretty, that's interesting. I like that as a job, that's fa fascinating. Any other interesting jobs? What's your name? Caroline, what do you do, Caroline? You work in TV. What, what do you do in TV? You work on what, sorry? You work on Holby City. Uh, uh, well done, I love it. I love what you've done with Holby City. I think the fucking genius move with Holby City recently was, was casting Hugh Laurie and changing the location to America. <laughs> I think we should talk to the funeral. Should we talk to the funeral director? Yeah. Funeral director, what are the chances of you getting down here? Don't fucking jump or we'll have to bury you. <laughs> but if you can make your way down to here, then we could talk to funeral director. That sounds exciting. While he's making his way down, yeah, give him a, a smatter. He's making his way. <laughs> while, he's, while he's making his way down, because it's a big old venue, you take a minute. Any other claims to fame in the room? Any other, any other exciting? You're a what? You're a paleontologist in Birmingham. <laughs> Just in case any dinosaurs... It's, it's dinosaur bones, yes? And you, you look at those. Not just dinosaurs. What, have you got another part-time job in Asda, have you? <laughs> what, what else do you look at? Different fossils. Wow. <laughs> I, no, no, I'm sure paleontologists, I'm sure that's a brilliant, wonderful scientific thing to do, but I did a project on dinosaurs when I was six, and I loved it. I was very excited, and I did lots of pictures, and I stuck them in, and I did a whole project on dinosaurs, and I loved them. And then what I did, and this is an interesting note to you, I grew up. <laughs> I'm still doing my dinosaur book, I like it. <laughs> What's, well, I'll indulge you. What's your favourite dinosaur? A velociraptor. A velociraptor. 
because of Jurassic Park. <laughs> oh, but you might as well have said Barney. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, up. Um, where the fuck is this Undertaker gone? <laughs> I'm slightly worried that there's been a death in the village <laughs> and he's been called away. <laughs> where the fuck is he? <laughs> where the fucking hell did you come from? <laughs> come and say hello. You're a funeral director. Hello, how are you? Very nice to meet you, sir. Come and say hello. Right, how are you, sir? Have a sit down. I'm all right. What's your... <laughs> Sorry. How am ya? I'm very too bad, me old booker. OK, you're not a gangster rapper, so just hold that like a... <laughs> hold that like a normal human being. OK. <laughs> what's, what's your name? I didn't even get your name. John. John. OK, well, I'll tell you what, I'll set this up properly. Hello, my name's Jimmy Carr. I'm joined this evening by John, the funeral director from Birmingham. <laughs> John. Tell us then, what does your, what does your, sort of, what does your average day involve? Uh, Making coffins and doing funerals and... Doing funerals? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Making coffins? Yeah, yeah. Collecting uh, deceased. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slightly terrified by you. <laughs> How, how do you, so you collect the body, so in a hearse or in a, just the back in of a transit? A, in a private ambulance. Sort in of a, like a transit, but a bit more <laughs> sophisticated. <laughs> a bit more sophisticated. When you say that. a private ambulance, is it just a transit with ambulance written on it in pen? <laughs> in dirt? <laughs> not really, no, not, not quite a lot. OK, so, so you go and collect them from the... So you have to turn up all kind of, yeah. you know, in a black suit and stuff, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, that's why I'm wearing this, so nobody recognises me. <laughs> they're not going to recognise you anyway, because they're dead. <laughs> they probably... I, just, I can't believe I'm here with you, nice one. <laughs> this is unreal, man. Must be lovely to meet someone who's still breathing. <laughs> <laughs> lovely fucking change for you. Um, do you get involved in the embalming? Uh, uh, not so much now. When I first started, I had a bit of, you know, I said, well, paint with the green stuff, but not so much now. I've been doing it, I've been doing it years. Sorry, so not so much now? No. It sounds like there was an incident that stopped you from doing it. No, no, it Sounds no. like they went, hang on, get away from that. That's not oh, free no. eating. <laughs> no, no, I, I tend not to do much with the bodies anymore, like, <laughs> if that's the wrong, if that's the right thing to say. You don't do so much with the bodies no. now? No, <laughs> no, no. I'm more... To do with coffins and funerals and... Now, have you, you work in this industry. Is there any... Now, necrophilia is something that's talked about. <laughs> I'm only asking. Because cause people think they're going to get away with it, but ultimately, you know, they'll get caught because some rotten cunt will split on them. <laughs> it's my necrophilia joke, everyone. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> well, I've been caught yet. You haven't been caught yet. <laughs> Do you want to hear my favourite, like, funeral joke? Well, not Undertaker joke. I don't know if this is, like, based on a true thing, but uh, you, you might know this, even. There, there, an old lady, beautiful, nice old lady, and, uh, she, she, you know, she, her husband's died. And she goes to the funeral parlour where, where you would work on it, and she's talking to the guy that does your job, and she says, he's beautifully laid out. She said, oh, you know, that classic sort of thing, oh, he's never looked better, he looks lovely, but... But I wanted him to be in his blue suit, and you've got him in his brown suit. Could you, could you put him in his, in his blue suit, not his brown suit? And the guy says, not a problem, madam. And then leans out the door and goes, change the heads on two and four. Because <laughs> presumably, once you're burying them, do, do things get stolen? Do, do like, because people get buried with jewellery and stuff, do things No, nah, no, nah, nah, nothing like that. I think that's a nice watch, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just... <laughs> and what, do you, uh, you live in Birmingham? Uh, well, well cried leave. Just outside Birmingham. <laughs> black country. In the black country. Racist. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the, um, What's that? That's an interesting thing. How did you get into it? How did you get into being a... Uh, I did for my work experience when I was at school. <laughs> you did your work experience? Yeah. It sounds like you turned up to that meeting late. <laughs> What's left, sir? Well, you're going to be working with corpses. That's quite, that's quite a cool thing, though, isn't it? Sure. Has anyone ever woken up? Because <laughs> you hear stories about it's something to do with fluids in the spine. You hear stories about people kind of bolt upright. In... Oh, no, never. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. You just position them how you want and you're away. <laughs> <laughs> John, well, look, you've come up and shared a bit about what you do, and I think that's an interesting thing to do. It's a, like, it's a life less ordinary work as a funeral director with the kind of corpses and things and, and death. You've got to deal with it. Hard part of life, but whatever. Um, I, feel, I feel like I should give something back. And the thing that I'm good at is writing jokes. I'm good at doing sort of one-liners. So I'd like to do a joke for you about... Any, it's sort of like my party piece, John. It's what I can do. What I can offer the world is jokes. So what would you like a joke about? Could be anything at all. Could be funeral directing, could be getting married, could be anything you want... Anything at all, I will write a joke from, like, off the top of my head, just really quick. Drum and bass music. <laughs> why, did, why did the lion get lost in the forest? I don't know. Because jungle is massive. Yes! <laughs> black, black, black! <laughs> <laughs> I think, that was, I think that was too easy. I think that was too easy a thing. So why don't we go for something else? Go for something more difficult. More di anything at all. It can be as abstract as you want. Motorbikes. <laughs> all right, okay. Okay, so two motorcycle guys, like bikers, like, like Hells Angel bikers, right? Two guys, massive bikes. Okay. The, the, uh, walk into a bar. They're all in the Harley Davidson kit or whatever. Helmets on. Walk into a bar. Barman sees him come, the barman goes, drinks, gentlemen? And, and, and the bikers go, cheese and onion crisps. Because <laughs> there's two of them. There's two of them. That, that's pretty good as they there. And now I should, let me just, just. And I, but we don't, John, we don't, this isn't like a setup thing. I didn't, I don't know you, right? So like, off the top of my head, I just, you said bikers. You could have said anything. Or motorbikes, and I did bikers. And off the top, and two of them, and then... Brilliant. <laughs> John, everyone, give him a round of applause. John, thank you so much. Really appreciate it coming up, man. Thank you so much. Hey, you want to go back there? You can go to that one. Thanks, man. John, everyone. <laughs> oh. I very much enjoyed my brilliant motorbike joke. <laughs> there was no joke there, John. We're just fucking with you. He's the nicest man. I hope when I die, he buries me. <laughs> Don't interfere, John. <laughs> Leave that alone. <laughs> I didn't like it when I was alive. <laughs> <laughs> right, more on me. Um, my girlfriend said to me, during sex, she said, did you remember to lock the front door? I said, yeah, there's no way you're going to escape. I had a relationship with a blind girl, which was rewarding but challenging. It took me ages to get her husband's voice right. <laughs> you didn't see that coming. <laughs> Neither did she. <laughs>